more about the medical implications of all this and bring in GP and former chair of the Council of the British Medical Association, Dr Chand Nagpal. Thank you, sir, for making time this evening. We were actually going to have you on the show to discuss something completely separate about the NHS, but of course we have this breaking news now. Um, we're grateful that you're still with us so we can talk to you about this. We obviously don't know what King Charles's cancer diagnosis is. We just know that uh, specialists spotted something separate when they were investigating a separate issue to do with his enlarged prostate. We're not going to speculate about what type of cancer it is. Uh, but in terms of recovery time, I mean, it, again, impossible to tell how long. But it, it, cancer treatments can range from anything from, you know, very, very light to very, very heavy, as many people in this country will have experienced and know people who have experienced. We're hearing he's still going to be doing paperwork and state work. Does that sound realistic to you? Yeah, so as first of all, my thoughts go uh, to the king, the royal family, and I sincerely hope that he um, responds well to his treatment. I think it's important to start by saying that um, uh, cancer uh, increases as people get older. In fact, a third of all uh, people in the UK who have cancer are aged 75 or, or older. But, but actually, the word cancer, when I was um, a medical student, a young doctor, um, was, was a very different uh, condition which often you know, claimed the lives of people, whereas now we're seeing cancer take very different forms, uh, and, and it doesn't have to be necessarily uh, an alarming diagnosis. Uh, it can be uh, picked up early, um, and if so, the treatment can start early. We have much more treatments available for cancer. There are many cancers that, you know, as I said 20 years ago, uh, were not curable. Now they are curable. So I, we have no detail. All I think it's important, therefore, to not speculate, um, but recognise that this could um, refer to a variety of, of different scenarios. Um, and in terms of treatment, we also have um, effective treatments to counter some of the side effects of cancer treatment. So we are actually, with the advancement of technology, uh, cancer itself as a diagnosis and its management has changed incredibly. So it's very hard at the moment to say any more without further details. What okay. we do know is that the treatment will be outpatient-based, outpatient based, which is increasingly common, uh, that patients in the past often would be in hospital to receive treatment. They're now able to go to a clinic, receive treatment and come back home and sometimes take medication also at home as well. Now, uh, one of the reasons that we're finding out about this is because the King said he wanted to be transparent. Obviously, there's an element of reassurance and information and transparency. But when it came to the issue of him having a procedure for an enlarged prostate just a few weeks ago when that was announced, it was sort of also inferred that he wanted to raise awareness about the issue. The NHS has since reported a spike in men reporting prostate issues. So clearly it might have had some knock-on effect. Do you think he's going to try and do something similar with this cancer diagnosis? You know, it's um, not for me to, to speculate on... Um what the king's motives are. Uh, but what I would say uh, is that, um, you know, it, it is important that uh, the, the public, the, the population are aware of um, symptoms of uh, 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 prostate symptoms and for that matter, symptoms of cancer, because the, as a GP, I can, you know, say that the, 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 the sooner people come in with symptoms, the more quicker we can diagnose uh, cancer and the, and the more effective treatment uh, can be. But also I would want to say that as a GP, that every individual, uh, and the King included, has a right to confidentiality and what they want to divulge to others. Uh, that's the way uh, our health service rightly is, that uh, our, our, the matters relating to our own health should be uh, able to be kept confidential if you choose it to be that way. But equally, if you want to share it, that's also possible. So I think it's really, uh, this is a, a decision that the King has taken. The other, I think, noteworthy um, statement from, from the palace is that he says that he is looking forward to resuming or returning to full public duties. So again, that would infer that he's hoping that this treatment will be effective and allow him to be uh, able to uh, recover fully. So, you know, we don't know any more yet. Um, and we would, of course, wish him uh, all the very best uh, in his treatment. And just talking statistically there, because I find it particularly interesting what you said at the start of our conversation about the way cancer rates have changed, but also the technology to treat them. Uh, we have two cases of confirmed cancer within the royal family right now. Um, Sarah, Sarah Ferguson, 
also has skin cancer. Just talking about the rates of cancer here in the UK and, and worldwide as well, statistically, how many people will get cancer in their life? Well, at the moment, uh, we know that about 3 million uh, people in the UK are living with cancer, uh, and we expect that to rise um, uh, as, as, as the years go by because people are living longer and we're see we've seen a, a, a steady, slow increase in the numbers of people with cancer. But in fact, you know, I think it's important to say that people are living with cancer. Uh, significant numbers uh, live for more than 10 years. Uh, as I said earlier, many will be cured as well. So the um, what, what I, as a, as a doctor, as a GP, what I think is really important is for people to uh, not automatically um, get alarmed by that word. There are many other medical conditions that I come across that um, uh, can have much great can can have an equally um, adverse impact on people's health, um, and people you know don't don't have the same sort of sense of connotations of alarm with those other conditions. So it, I think it's important to to think of cancer as a as a umbrella term that covers a myriad of different um, types of cancer, different conditions, and in fact even within a specific type of cancer, you have different grades uh, and therefore you can have, for example, with breast cancer, many women now today uh, can be treated and effectively cured, um, and yet you can have advanced breast cancer which may be more difficult to treat. So I think we, it's important not to speculate, not to generalize, um, and that's particularly more important when, in the example of the king, we don't even have a diagnosis and he's been, I think it's it's to his credit that he has uh, wanted to be open. But what I don't think would be right is for us to now start to speculate into uh, anything more than, than he has chosen to divulge. Absolutely. Dr. Charles Nagpal, look, we really appreciate your specialism, specialism this evening. Thank you. I'm now going to continue this conversation once again with Talk TV's royal editor, Sarah Hewson, who's listening into that conversation there. And I think Dr. Chan's absolutely right in that the, the, the palace is trying to quash speculation as much as possible. Cancer is a big word. But as we were hearing there, it doesn't necessarily have to be as scary as it once was. No. And of course, when you hear the word cancer, you know, the alarm bells do start to ring. Uh, it was notable that when the Princess of Wales, when the statement was released about the Princess of Wales uh, going in for abdominal surgery, Kensington Palace were quick to say that it was not cancerous. Uh, when the King went into hospital for his prostate enlargement treatment, we were told that it was benign, but it was during that surgery that another area of concern was noted. Um, it is unusual for a member of the royal family to go as far as he has. Look, I know we don't know what kind of cancer it is, and we don't know his full pro prognosis, but this is a lot more information than we would have got in the past uh, regarding a monarch's health, particularly when you think about uh, the late Queen. And um, I, it has been done, we are told, because uh, the King, as Prince of Wales, was patron of a number of charities, that he has been uh, encouraged by the reaction to his uh, prostate treatment and the number of people, a thousand percent increase in uh, searches for uh, prostate enlargement on the NHS website, for example, and that by putting this information out there, look, there's got to be transparency mm. uh, as well uh, for the monarch, but by giving as much information as they have, hoping to reassure, but also uh, to raise awareness of cancer as well, which is something that Sarah Ferguson has been doing a lot, mm. unfortunately, because uh, she has now uh, had a second cancer diagnosis. Yeah, and it also brings to mind, um, bizarrely, but uh, coincidentally, the US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin mm. also uh, has prostate cancer at the moment. And during a press conference in the US last week about Middle East drone strikes, he started talking about it because he hadn't informed the rest of his cabinet, his government, about it. And there was a lack of transparency and there was concerns because you can't have leadership of a country suffering from such an illness and not making it clear. So it's, it's interesting to see the way that I think communication is shifting on this. Look, you just mentioned the Queen there. And do remind us, because to my knowledge and memory, she, she didn't have a cancer diagnosis any time during her reign, but she did have some other issues. Yes, she did. And there were a number of occasions when the Queen had to go into hospital. There was uh, 
exploratory abdominal procedure, for example, at one point. There were other times uh, she had to cancel engagements in the latter years of her life. Uh, we weren't told on one occasion that she had been into hospital. Uh, and then there was a lot of criticism of the palace for not being transparent uh, in that. The Duke of Edinburgh, of course, had many uh, hospital mm. stays uh, uh, during his time uh, at uh, the King Edward VII Hospital in London. We know that the King was treated at the London Clinic, as was uh, the Princess of Wales. As for where his treatment will take place now and what uh, kind of treatment, we don't know. We are told he is getting specialist care, uh, that he's receiving the very best possible medical advice uh, that he can, and that he is having that treatment in London. As you would expect from the king of uh, of uh, the country, that he would have the access to the best possible care as well. Look.